Okay, thank you, Craig. This is the uh, presentation that you really hope you don't give. Um, it ruined uh, a, a, a nice ending to what would have been an outstanding crop, which was still a good crop, but this is not just a one-person perspective on the freeze. This is the conglomeration of a lot of viewpoints. Uh, league agronomist, you know, I mean, Herman was out there Christmas morning uh, looking at fields. The other league agronomists, consultants, conversations with uh, growers, conversations with uh, millers. Well, freezes aren't new to the industry and they're not new to the research community. It's an article in 1939 from E.W. Brandes, Elmer Walker, if you're trying to put initials there. But look at the bottom line. Greater tolerance of cold is, of course, desirable to retard inversion of sugar, particularly in standing canes in years when the infrequent early visitation of frost occurs. So it's always been on the forefront of the industry, and it's still a major aspect of sugarcane research. Well, the 23 December 23rd freeze was not the first freeze to hit the industry. The picture at the bottom um, was taken on October 28th in Bunky at uh, Fletcher B. Benz's farm. But here are some of the temperatures coming out of Bunky. October 19th, 31 degrees. You know, so that's a minor freeze, but a minor freeze is what the other guy has. And you can see, you know, good frost, 33, 34, and then November the 18th, 28 degrees and that had an effect on their crop. This is a picture from the north part of uh, Point Capi, Joby Bow. He called uh, in the early part of December, even before the December 23rd freeze was forecast. And this is a classic example when the, where the cane that was down was hurt much greater than the standing cane. And uh, their sugar was starting to trend low and it was a case where Time to start paying attention to the blades and fan speeds to blow out some of those uh, tops that were severely affected by the freeze. So on the right is a split stalk from the cane that was down. On the left is a, an erect stalk, something that's standing up. Big difference between cane that was standing and cane that was down on the ground. And that was a shot from December the 5th. Okay, that's 18 days before the uh, freeze. So that takes you to the uh, December 23rd freeze, and this is just uh, the temperature uh, pattern across the state. Again, if you look to the north and to the west, we certainly had colder temperatures. It was 10 and 11 in Shreveport and Monroe. And last week at the uh, St. Martin Field Day, there was a grower from Arkansas there, and it was four to eight degrees up north. But you can see Again, all the way down to the coast, a significant uh, stalk splitting freeze. So Herman and I got together and uh, sent out <clears throat> the best management BMPs, best management practices uh, for a freeze. And I just kind of circled that middle paragraph, something that I added. And because of the advanced stage of grinding at the time, and the severity of the forecasted freeze, a lot of our management practices, our aces in the hole, uh, weren't really gonna apply or they were gonna be less effective. You know, normally there's variety differences out there. Normally there's elevation differences out on the farm that we can manage, front of the farm to the back of the farm, standing cane versus down cane. So a few of those tools were kind of taken away with this away from us because of the time of the year and the severity of the freeze. So the best advice, simple as it is, cut cane, clean cane, so the mill can grind cane. And I'm not naive enough to think that on the days where it's pouring down rain and the two days in a row we had a thick fog, you're not gonna do a good job of cleaning cane. You're doing as best you can. And then like my nephew Charles would say, rinse and repeat. Every day was a reset, right? You know, you, you made it through a day and every day the weather was changing and it was a reset. So first question is, what about the uh, potential for next year's crop? 
what was the effect of the freeze on the uh, roots below ground. And this is from the Dean Lee weather station. That's our northernmost weather station inside of the cane belt. And this is at the four inch level. And our soil was warm going into the freeze and 39 degrees, uh, five, you know, that's quite a few degrees above freezing. For comparison, the February 21st Mardi Gras freeze in 21, soil temperature at this location got down to 34 degrees and we weathered that situation uh, pretty well. This is some uh, data from uh, Dr. Paul White and uh, artistry by, doc, uh, by Mavis Daigle. And Paul put temperature sensors out in the field. This is from a field that's harvested. It's got a trash blanket. You see the four days where he collected data, the four days we had a freeze. 24 degrees on top of the mulch blanket, 21, 18, and 21 on top. And underneath the mulch blanket, 31, 30, 30, 31. So I mean, the mulch blanket does afford some protection uh, from the freeze, and then you can see soil temperatures at the one inch level. This is on newly planted cane, you know, plant cane that might be a foot or two you know, uh, in height from fall growth. Uh, sensor near the leaf whorl, 24, 23, 22, 25. Ground level underneath that fall plant growth, 28, 26, 28, 31. Again, even that little bit of uh, crop growth from planting uh, affords some protection from the freeze. And then again, the one inch levels uh, above freezing. He had sensors in standing cane, again, at the top of the stalk, middle of the stalk, at the base of the stalk, and again, at one inch, 20, across the top of the stalk, 25, 23, 23, and 26. Down at the bottom of the stalk, 29, 28, 29, 31. If you remember after the 1980 freeze, big difference between cane that was standing yet to be harvested versus cane that was harvested. And this shows you what's going on there. So whenever a freeze happens, uh, you just have to think back to what was a similar freeze that we can kind of gauge things by. And uh, after reading in the Sugar Bulletin and remembering, we had a freeze in 1976 that appeared pretty similar to the freeze we had uh, at Christmas this year. That freeze was November 29th, 30th, and December 1st. It got down to 19 at St. Gabriel at the Sugar Research Station, and right across the river in Brule, it got down to 20 degrees. So that seemed to be a freeze that was uh, pretty similar. So this is comparing the 1976 freeze to the 2022 freeze, and what is graphed here are daily maximum temperatures. And so you can see degrees on the left side, days from the freeze, days from the first freeze event, so day one, day two, day three from the freeze. The green line is the 1976 freeze. What's apparent? It was much cooler after the 1976 freeze than it was after the 20 two freeze. Matter of fact, look all those 80 degree days we had uh, following this past December's freeze. You see fog December 31st and January 1st. Foggy days. Matter of fact, it seemed like an October day. Uh, you know, we're in the low 80s and it's foggy and it's everything you don't, you don't want to see after a freeze. So how far did the mills grind in the north? Um, after the uh, 1976 freeze, Sinclair, Smithfield, and Alma ground till December the 19th. So they ground for about three weeks. And Herman and I talked about this, and it's like, well, you know, this is nothing you want to publicize because every freeze tells its own story. But in private conversation, uh, it's like, well, best case scenario looks like it might be three weeks, and we actually got more than that. What was different in 1976? Everybody remembers the high price of sugar in 74. Well, the market crashed in 76 where we had 10 and 11 cent sugar. 
What was the major variety in 1976? CP6137, low sucrose, poor coal tolerance. Different set of economic considerations, different set of varieties, but again, that, that three wheat mark um, is where they made it to. Uh, juice purity, uh, a couple of growers shared their mill reports. This is just juice purity right off the mill sheets from a grower up north and a grower down south. And the grower, uh, the grower uh, down south is in red. You can see it purities uh, on the mill sheet at 88.7, which is about normal, you know, pre-freeze juice purities. And then the grower from the south. Obviously, we talked about a north-south gradient. Uh, due to the freeze, and that's pretty apparent based on juice purity from the core lab sheet. So again, Dean Lee, top line is soil temperature, but then this is the uh, minimum temperature in green. And you can see the dates at the bottom. Uh, we got to 14 and a half degrees on that first morning, 19.6, 25 degrees, and then 29 degrees. You can see the temperature that next day maximum didn't get above freezing and then barely above freezing on that second day. So obviously this was a significant freeze. Uh, just four days in a row, uh, below 25 degrees in Baton Rouge. The record is 1940, where we had seven days in a row of temperatures that didn't get above 40 for a minimum. We also conducted a, uh, the folks at USDA conducted a, a variety freeze tolerance test, and this is just uh, um, uh, minimum temperature. Uh, I mean, the, the temperature from the uh, data loggers uh, over the course of the freeze test. It got down to 25.5 the first morning, barely above freezing that first day, down to 22 for the next two mornings and 25 degrees on that fourth morning. So we were set up for a very good variety cold tolerance test. So again, just to show you variation from the north and the south. You know, so we're gonna talk a little bit about variety tolerance, not gonna go into it in the detail. Uh, gonna save some of that for the meeting uh, on Friday with the consultants, we're still getting data. But um, you know, on the left, that's just a field of 299, just north of Kaplan on January the 10th. It looked ragged. You split the stalk and, you know, decent. Brett Barrick sent the picture on the right that's 615 with a growth crack. And this is a couple of weeks plus from the date of the freeze. And you see the bubbles? That's active fermentation. You know, petri dishes on the farm. So active cane degradation. In the middle is a picture of the stalks from the cold tolerance test uh, taken at the USDA farm in Chacahula. And uh, the, the test was uh, straight, so everything was standing up. Going into the, uh, this year, here were the cold tolerance ratings of the varieties. And we've had several tests, 2013, 2014, 2019, 2021, maybe I'm missing a few others. And most of these are cold tolerance ratings based on not a stalk splitting freeze, but a canopy killing freeze. So going in, you know, the two that we know are good, 540 and 838, 299 has always been kind of a middle of the pack. It does tend to vary quite a bit. 804 moderate, 183 moderate, uh, 201 and 615, poor for cold tolerance. 739 had some good tests, had some average tests. Uh, 267 moderate, 885, the one that's really on the expansion. Uh, it had one good test, it had one bad test. And 306, 508, both at moderate. And I show the information on the right, really in relation to uh, 384. As our genetics get further and further away from the source, 384 is a good parent. It shows up in the pedigree of everything. You know, we've got children, grandchildren, and 885 as great-grandchildren. So comparing that with, 20, with freeze performance from 2022, 
uh, on into January. 540, not a lot of acres, but again, people saved it for last and it was, it was decent. And when I say good, it's not like it is freeze resistant. These are all just percentages compared to the first sampling date to the last sampling date, which was January the 20th. 299 behaved really well and withstood things, relatively speaking, in the industry decent. Again, when you have a freeze of this magnitude, no variety is going to go unaffected. 183 behaved better than it has in the past in the farm and in the cold tolerance test. 201 did better. 615 had the same rating it did in previous tests. 739, which kind of had a moderate good rating, really did poor moderate. That was one of the more surprising aspects of the uh, test. 267, same. And the bad news of this presentation is that 885 was last place in our cold tolerance test. It starts out at high sugar because it's a, a very early maturing high TRS variety, but in terms of percent reduction, uh, it was bottom of the pack. So that's a look at it from the field, and uh, next we're going to have Harold Burkett.